In a world of glitz and glam, flashing lights and screaming fans, most people are unaware of the war that rages behind the scenes. And that war includes your favorite artist and your favorite songs. This is The Dark Side of Songwriting. Hosted by Naeem Edwards. Collecting information through spying is essential to wielding power. To wield power, you need to understand others, their intentions, goals, and ambitions, as well as secrets, weaknesses, and ulterior motives. This knowledge enables you to predict what they'll do in the future. However, most people won't intentionally tell you these things. You need a way to ferret out the information without their knowing it. When you know your opponent's secrets, you can predict his behavior and control him. You can enlist spies to gather intelligence for you, but it's better to be a spy yourself. Adopt a friendly manner and you'll get people to spill their plans and weaknesses. Pose as a friend, work as a spy. Law 14 of the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. As we cruise through this conflict, we have Kendrick on one side saying, what makes you think I don't have people in OVO working for me? I got people over there telling me all your business, sending me your address, sending me your pictures. Well, he's alleging that. And then we got Drake on the other side that is saying we are planning fake stories because we have somebody over there working for us as well or he's alleging it whatever leaving everybody in suspense of who's lying and who's telling the truth i'm here to tell you that this is the music business and in the music business there's always going to be a snake both of these people have snakes around them both of these people have moles both of these people have people who are basically sitting around like sponges collecting information and they are willing to turn on them turn on them because they were never there for them in the beginning at the drop of a hat dime whatever you want to drop i want to put us in the way back machine before we jump into how this could have happened with them let's hop in this way back machine and go back to when kanye was working on whatever that album was that was like i'm bipolar on the front or was it the life of Pablo? It doesn't matter. Kanye was working on that one album where Drake came out and was writing on that album for him because Drake still does write some stuff. He doesn't write everything, but he still he still participates in these processes. So Kanye is working on that album. Con Drake flies out to wherever they was at Utah, Montana, Idaho, Iowa. It doesn't. They were somewhere out in the middle of where people are not at in the mountains. And Drake was working on pop style. Kanye promised him that beat, which was that song that he was like skippity boop, doppity doop, that he ended up giving to Pusha T in the midst of their conflict. Drake had that song when he was like, you know, I pop style for your boss. And he, whatever, repeat, I'm tired of sticking my hand out and let people eat, whatever the lyrics was that I'm going off the top of my head, but you know what these songs are. When Drake was out there with Kanye West, Drake actually believed that he was friends with Kanye West because, and I, we are in our way back machine, Kanye did his first mainstream video, that best I ever had. He directed that, he helped produce it. He was the person that really gave him that mainstream embrace, even though he had Wayne, even though he had this and had that. So coming down the line and coming down the pipe, he actually believed that because this was the person who showed me love. Like this is the biggest person on the planet aside from like cash money in them. This is Kanye West. Like it's like a God in the presence, at least back then. He actually believed that they had a real relationship. So when Kanye West, he confided in Kanye West about the child. That's how Pusha T got the information. So when Kanye West turned on Drake, because Kanye West was in a jealous rage about having to fight Drake and Drake overtaking the number one spot. Because my thing is, like I said in Law 4, once you number one, the only place to go down is, is to go down. There's nothing above the top spot. Kanye was suffering from the same thing where he is seeing, I don't want to say he was his protege, but this is your friend and your friend has surpassed you and you just can't be happy for him and support him because at the end of the day yes this music industry is a different world but they're still dealing 
with civilian issues. They still deal with the same stuff that everybody else deals with. The same stuff that you go through, the same stuff that the people that your job go through, we go through this in this music industry. So in order to, he stabbed Drake in the back 100%. You cannot argue that. Again, remember, we're still in our way back machine. He stabs Drake in the back and tells Pusha T his business. Why would he do that? Why not just leave Pusha T to fight this battle himself? He told him about, uh, what's his name, Adonis? He told him about the Nike deal, or well, the, it was an Adidas deal at first, and it turned, then Nike came and worked with him. This is protocol. This is what regularly happens. I remember being in a situation where I was working with some people and they, I noticed it before I allowed myself to become vulnerable because this is what you're going to have to do. I'm talking to my music people and I'm talking to people who have music people in their life. I was in a situation one time before where people wanted some information from me, but I saw that they were only kicking it because they wanted the information from me. The easiest way to test to see what's going on around you is to stall these people out. I'm going to wait to see how long it takes you to drop off because I'm not giving up any type of information. Nobody's going to be around you for free. Nobody's going to be around you for no reason. Nobody's going to be around you for the love if you're talking about this music industry. Now, when we talk about Kendrick and Drake and sending pictures and somebody's wife and manager having all these things, you know, how did, how would anybody even know any of this information? We got to understand that the higher you go, the lonelier it's going to get. I saw Fannie Willis talk about when they had her on trial confessing about being unprofessional with one of the dudes she had hired sleeping with his wife, that because she's the highest to top cop in her state, her district, it's a very lonely profession. It's the same thing with this music. You start off thinking that you're going to take everybody. You start off thinking that everybody around you has the same goals as you because they support you. And I hope to God that that is true. Because, but that can only be true if everybody around you have something going on and we all moving and we all working and we're all winning. Because you can't have people around you that's working and working and working and you're the only person winning. Working and working and working and they never get a chance to shine. Working and working and working and it's nothing working out for them. This is how people around you start turning into snakes. We haven't even got to the part where snakes come in. How you would think to yourself, I'm Drake, I'm Kendrick. I'm not going to let my guard down. I'm Drake, I'm Kendrick. I know that fake people. I'm Drake, I'm Kendrick. I know that people want to be around me just to get something. But you got to understand that you're still human at the end of the day and you have needs as well. So let's deal with this first part of how this could have happened. Because somebody's telling the truth and somebody's lying. Both of these people are not lying. Do we know who's telling the truth and who's not? No, not when it comes to having a snake, but as far as no to the information, they both have snakes. There's absolutely zero chance that both of these people have had 100% solid people around them. Otherwise people wouldn't be throwing these accusations out like that. The first wave is you and the people that you brought with you and the team that you have. We got to understand that as music professionals, people in music, people who have companies, people who work with labels, people who do anything that's got to do with being in music, whether it is you just started out, you intermediate, you independent, you mainstream, you somewhere between independent and mainstream, you work with superstars, it don't matter. There's always going to be somebody around you that is disgruntled. Both of these camps cannot possibly be given 100% attention to everybody that is around them because at that level you are a machine you are the brand it's not you're not recording music in your bedroom hoping that somebody click on it you're not recording music at the studio trying to network with other producers in the city to try to get some beats and try to get motion you're not performing as an opener at a club where people are gonna be at anyway hoping that they'll go home and look you up you're already the machine you're already that big. And even when you start climbing and start having something, the people around you, you're not going to be able to 100% service them. And you have to understand that even when you get to moderate success, if everybody around you is not 
being tested and not working and they don't have anything of their own that they can be proud of that is successful. Not have it and it fail, not have it and it's doing okay. 100% pure success. Something that belongs to them that don't have nothing to do with you. Things that are moving that don't have anything to do with you that could survive without you. There is gonna be bitterness that comes into the picture. We see this all the time where people get off these teams because whatever reason they got fired. You know, people get fired for stuff all all day. You mess up the sound at a concert, you'll never work in sound again, you, at least with Jay-Z. You take a, a terrible picture, we'll never hire you again. You play with my back end, we'll never come back to this club. Somebody is always going to be getting the short end of the stick. A lot of people can just go and maybe if they have a portfolio, they can find work somewhere else. Other people might take this as an opportunity to stab you in your back especially when you're in the middle of a war, people are gonna be looking for people to get information from. They'll go all the way back to high school. I remember, because if you don't know, I'm from Portsmouth. I grew up between Portsmouth and Norfolk for the most part, and Pusha T grew up pretty much in Norfolk. When Drake and Pusha T was beefing, Drake was calling everybody in Virginia, trying to get information about Pusha T and nobody was going to give it up. And it says something to have loyal enemies because it would have been easy to just sell some secrets. It would have been easy to just tell some business. It would have been easy to put out something from somebody that's around, but these people where I'm from understand that it would be a greater consequence to side with you, even if I don't have nothing to do with the person you have a problem with. I'd rather not get involved and say, hey, you handle your own business yourself than deal with the consequence that's gonna come from someone else. We don't have a lot of people that's like that because a lot of people hold grudges. Most people hold grudges in this industry. You know, like I've, I've said this before, if you knew here, you probably haven't heard me say it. It's, I don't know which video I said it on. I've said it multiple times though, that people in this business you can piss the wrong person off and you'll never work again or you might work but you're gonna have a very hard time working because this is the business of relationship and this is why having moles and rats and snakes in the camp is probably the thing that's gonna bring you down the hardest in your career because the more you do progress it's gonna be harder to trust people because you're gonna have to trust somebody. And who do you, how do you know who you can trust? Because it's not always going to be, and this is leading me into this second thing, it's not always gonna be you being strictly professional because you are a human being at the end of the day. Kendrick is human. Drake is human. They have human needs. So if it, it could be pillow talking, because we know that pillow talking gets most of these people in trouble in the first place because they're sharing women or men, they're sharing or days or whatever. They're sharing people. They have people that's running with each other. This person does this, this person does this. Sharing engineers, sharing the work, sharing, doing all these type of things. You're, go, you're bound to slip up. A, another thing is people with these drug problems in these social settings. The drug problem might get you slipped up, but the, you mix the drugs with the social settings. Now people might just be talking amongst themselves. You might feel like because we're here, you let your guard down with your drug. That really don't need to be explained. People get on these drugs and and drugs includes pills, uh, sched, drugs on the schedule, alcohol, hey, I need a cigarette. And that could be followed by small talk. Don't just think somebody gotta be shoving needles in their arm or powder in their nose for them to come all out with it. But we know that these people stack drugs like Jenga. So who knows what they're talking about? But, and I'm just talking strictly about you interacting with somebody that is not the person that is a person you think you can trust. So we move past the drugs. Another thing is sometimes you just need to talk. Somebody that's been around for a long time, you think you can confide in them, but they have somebody, they know somebody a part of the other team or they're with somebody that's a part of the other team that's somebody that don't like you that can have access. It's like, for lack of a better analogy, the sign to one person, that sign to another person, that sign to another person. No, you're not directly connected to that first person, but you have a chain that you will be able to climb up to get to that person. 
So we, we spend our time in these situations where you think you can have a vulnerable moment. You just talking because that person that you're talking to that is a part of your camp, is a part of your situation, is in proximity of your situation. You've never heard nothing bad about them. They've never came out and said nothing. They're not active on social media if you need it for the modern times. They're not into, you've never seen them into the mess or into the things, but that doesn't mean that you can trust them. There is, it shouldn't be none of that. And this is why it's important to have life figured out before you get into this business. Because I know people like to come up and say, I just fell into rap, man. I just, you know, you hear these people, I just started rapping six months ago and all of this stuff. And I'm rapping because he made me rap. He, young thug paid little baby to go to the, st stop. You get into this business on purpose. You don't get into this business on accident because your life changes once you reach success. If you just rapping and don't nobody hear it, if you just doing stuff and don't nobody know about it, it's, it doesn't count. Wins count. You have to win in this business because when you win in this business, you win for real. Even if you're a plant, you win for real. If you win, you win. So you just having a regular day and you thinking you can confide to somebody because you're judging them based on how they act. But you don't know if that is the person that's telling your business. A lot of the things is just going to be those disgruntled people, them people who they got problems. You don't even know what kind of problems they got. They need more money because we know a lot of these people, they don't pay. They don't want to pay. They, they pay based on however they feel and they pay based on whatever you're doing. And if the, the person that's the least likely to turn on you is the person that's getting what they believe they should be getting. This is why when you watched American Gangsta, then when Denzel was, when his cousin was telling him it's going to be 50 and Denzel said, give him the hundred. He's like, it's going to be 50 Frank. And he's like, no, give him the hundred, give him the whole thing. The significance of giving them more than what they asked for or giving them more than what they deserve is to make sure that you're covering your back and your bases because that's going to instill that trust because it's the, the more that we're doing things the ethical way in the way that is in favor of you just as much as in favor of me, the less likely you are to turn on me. I don't have to worry about my producer turning on me if I'm paying them. I don't have to worry about the photographer leaking my information if they're getting what they want. This is why communication is so important. You don't need to be talking through, talking through five people to get to the person that is signing the check. It's not like you work at the warehouse. You're taking pictures for this person. This is why the manager is damn near the most important person in the person's life. If that's the person that is doing the communicating, that is the person that the person in Kendrick or Drake's side, they need to be pleasing. Because if you got all these random people around, you're not going to tell me that everybody's happy in the situation. And sometimes people moving past, I mean, it's, it's going to be unhappiness that's at the root. But when you think about it, there's going to be people that are just jealous is it's inevitable. And it could be the label owner that is jealous. It could be, anybody can be jealous of you. Anybody can be envious of you. You cannot write off anybody because we know. And especially when we look at these people like Kendrick, like Drake, like any rapper, you can stick in the slot. They put themselves in these situations where they decide that they want to go and be a part of things that they don't have no business being a part of. Like, if you look at Drake, for an example, you want to go and hang out with gangsters and hang out with all these other street type of people when you know in real life you don't have no business over there. We could probably say the same thing about Kendrick, but if you're from that, then that's all you've ever been around. But you can still be overpowered because you might just be some type of affiliate. But when that money on... I love that, by the way. Some Somebody said that. It was funny. I like that. But when that money come into the picture, right, it starts changing the way people look at you. So you could be Drake and it could be Big Bruh, Big Bruh, Big Bruh. Soon as Big Bruh says no, now you're disgruntled and you're looking at a way to get back. You're looking at a way to hit back. They never want to come out and say, I hate you, let me leave, because you feel like any type of proximity to any of these people is going to lead to some type of opportunity for you not knowing that you're not going to get anything because you don't do any work. You don't, you're not going to get anything because this has nothing to do with you. You're just somebody that I'm stealing credibility from. 
you're just somebody that you can play security around here. So I get protection. You get to say that you know me. I get what I want that feeds my image in my career. You get to say that you was around me. You can take a picture and show the kids and let them know here. I might even, I might even throw you a bone and break you a couple thousand dollars. This, these are the things that we're dealing with. And everybody that everybody has somebody like this. Everybody knows somebody's secret. Everybody know, because my thing is that's just the stuff outside. Now, what if you have some type of sick fetish? What if you have some type of weirdo thing about you that everybody in your camp know? You don't want it to get out, but they don't agree. They don't agree with it because my problem with rats, I hate all rats, by the way. I hate them. It don't matter where they've come from. I hate all rats. I hate all moles. I don't like that because why can't you work on your own and stand on your own? You're going to have both sides. Now, if you, you, you know, playing, when you start playing with the secrets and playing with the weaknesses and stuff, there's going to be people who disagree. Most of these people are only going to be yes, man, because you sign in the check. So the minute that the check stopped getting signed or the check is a dollar short, they're looking for a way to expose you because they hated what you were doing already. And now they're just looking for a reason to say, oh man, he playing with them kids, man. I don't, I don't agree with that. They agreed with it when they were getting their way. But now that somebody else, something happened with you or something happened that is in, that they feel like this, the ship is sinking. Now they're looking for their way out and their way out can be, I'm just going to get this bread and go about my business because somebody's going to pay. You're not going to get no secrets without paying. Nobody's going to do that unless it's some like, because this business is fake. Like you're going to smile in a lot of people's faces that you don't agree with. You're going to hold your tongue a lot when you don't agree with what's going on because a lot of people do this. They hold their tongue and they don't say anything because they feel like it's going to ruin their reputation. If they feel like it's going to ruin how people look at them. They feel like it's going to compromise the things that they have going on. So you know what a person will do? They'll shut their mouth and let you have your way. We're seeing this with 21 Savage. He's not picking a side because if well, no matter whose side he pick, he's going to be wrong. So the best thing for him to do was be quiet because a lot of these people don't have friends, like real friends who just happy because if everybody not progressing, like I said earlier, if everybody not progressing, everybody's not going to be happy. Somebody's going to always be unhappy. Somebody's always going to be in a situation where they are good. Somebody's going to get the short stick. Somebody's going to get the small spoon. And this is how these things creep in. It's inevitable. You're going to have, and you have them in all walks of life. You have them at your job. You're going to have them in your company. You're going to have whistleblowers. People who were fine with these practices until they couldn't take it no more or they was looking for some type of way out. Kendra Lamar has moles and stuff on his side. Drake has moles and stuff on his side. It, it's Look how big they are. It's inevitable. It's moles at the label. It's moles at the distributor. It's moles regular civilians. It's moles in the bedroom. You sharing girls. You sharing drug dealers. You're sharing all these things. You think that your secrets were going to be safe? Was well, you don't? No. You you shut up and take your stuff to the grave. Because that's the only way that nobody's going to know about what you got going on. But that lends into the self-control thing. Because a lot, these, a lot of these people got some type of drug dependency or drug problem. And that's probably how your stuff got out. Running your mouth, chatting, talking in your sleep, all type of stuff. Guilty, conscious, just needing to get it out. Pissing somebody off that know pisses somebody off that has some type of relation with the person that you have a problem with, so they can go back and get the information because they they can't stand you either. Building fake relationships, all of this, mole city, rat city, bitch, rat rat city, bitch. That's that's all this stuff is. Woo! All right. This is the dark side of songwriting. You take care of yourself and y'all take care of each other.